Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and I'd actually say that this is the best RTX 4080 that I have reviewed so far. We're talking about the Palette RTX 4080 GameRock OC with its blingtastic design, a power limit that can be increased up to 400 watts, and it's also the quietest 4080 that I have reviewed yet. But can I actually recommend this card? Let's find out. If we kick things off then with a look at the design, the first thing you need to know is that the shroud and external design of the GameRock OC is identical to the 4090 GameRock OC that we reviewed in October. Now the internal design, the heatsink and the cooler has been changed slightly, but we'll get to that later. With the same external design though, this means we do find the same full on shroud aesthetic with the crystal like rgb diffusers which absolutely grab your attention immediately of course these look even better when the rgb is turned on though i do also have no doubt that the overall aesthetic is going to split opinion like nothing else you can also synchronize the rgb lighting with your motherboard using the included argb cable though the header for this is smack bang in the middle of the card, right next to the power connector, which does make cable management a bit tricky, but I say it's better than not having the option at all. As for the overall dimensions of the card, it is again exactly the same as the 4090 version, measuring in at 329 by 137.5 by 71.5 millimeters. That means it is a three and a half slot card and it also weighs in at just over 1.94 kilos. So you definitely will want to use the included GPU support bar, which actually screws into the card itself just to prevent any GPU sag. And actually, I think this is a pretty effective method. We also get a look at the three 90 millimeter fans, which aren't the largest, but they do use Palette's Gale Hunter design with a new winglet fan tail that Palette claims helps to increase airflow concentration down onto the heatsink. Flipping the card over as well, we get a look at the full length gray metal backplates, though it does have a number of cutouts towards the end of the card, which simply allows airflow to pass directly through the heatsink. On the back of the card, we also get a look at the dual BIOS switch, which is positioned right next to the IO bracket. Here you have a choice of the performance or the silent modes. The performance is the default option and this will allow you to set the power limit up to 400 watts while it also has a higher clock speed and a more aggressive fan curve than the silent mode. But of course, we do test both of these later in the review. We can also see the 12 volt high power connector with power including a triple eight pin adapter. And we also get standard display outputs with three DisplayPort 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1. Moving on to disassembly of the card then, we can actually see that Pallet is again reusing the overall PCB design from the 4090 GameRock OC, though the VRM itself has been tweaked slightly. So instead of a 16-phase VRM on the 4090, here we find a 15-phase VRM for the GPU, while it's still a 3-phase VRM for the memory. We can also see that Palette is using 50 amp on semi NCP302150 MOSFETs across the board with a UPI UP9512R controller for the GPU VRM and a UPI UP9529Q memory controller. It's when looking at the heatsink though where we actually see the biggest difference between the 4080 and the 4090 GameRock OC. Instead of a vapor chamber for the 4090 GameRock OC, Instead, we find a traditional base plate here that sits on top of eight heat pipes. This base plate contacts both the GPU and memory modules with separate plates used to contact the VRM. We can also note that Pallet is not using any thermals on the underside of the back plate.
that's where we're going to leave it then for our look at the car's design. But now it's time to move on to our testing. For this, we are of course using our regular GPU test system powered by MSI. This is based on Intel's i9-12900K CPU, paired with the MSI MEG Z690 Unify motherboard. And we also have 32GB of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory. All testing was done using the MSI MPG321 URQD 4K monitor. Kicking off the benchmarks then with thermal performance, here we are testing both BIOS modes, and we definitely see competitive results from the GameRock OC. Using the performance BIOS, the GPU peaked at 63.3 degrees, while the silent BIOS only ran about one degree hotter. It may not be the outright coolest running card, but it's hard to argue with thermal performance at sub 65 degree levels. Memory thermals though aren't actually quite so competitive, with the performance BIOS seeing a peak of 66 degrees and the silent BIOS seeing a peak of 68 degrees. Now those are still very good results, but they are only small improvements over the Founders Edition, but I'd say it's really hard to argue when the temperatures are this low to begin with. What makes the thermal performance so impressive though is the low noise levels at which the GameRock OC operates. Using the performance BIOS, the fans run at 1390 RPM, while the silent BIOS slowed the fans down to 1290 RPM, making this the quietest RTX 4080 we have tested so far. There was also no noticeable coil whine during my testing. For our noise normalized thermals then, I had to increase fan speed up to 1880 RPM to hit 40 decibels, and this saw the GPU temperature drop down to 57.7 degrees, putting it actually within one degree of the Gigabyte Gaming OC, so Palette's design is certainly an efficient cooler. The memory thermals are again still slightly warmer, but at 60 degrees, it's still a very good result, even if the Gigabyte Gaming OC and Inno 3D Idol X3 are that bit cooler. I did also test PowerDraw with the Performance BIOS and its 340 watt TGP, and that resulted in actual real world PowerDraw of the GameRock OC hitting 325 watts. Now, this does make it the most power hungry RTX 4080 I've tested, but it is still a bit below the rated TGP and it still draws less power than the RTX 3080. Still, I do wonder if the higher power draw is contributing to the clock speed headroom, as the GameRock OC also ran the fastest of any RTX 4080 we have tested so far. Over our 30 minute stress test, the card averaged 2819 megahertz using the performance BIOS, so that's about 30 megahertz faster than the Inno 3D iChill X3 and almost 100 megahertz faster than the Nvidia Founders Edition. This increased clock speed does also translate into gaming performance, as the GameRock OC proved to be the fastest running RTX 4080 we have tested so far. The margins are very slim though, as the GameRock OC was never more than 3% faster than the Founders Edition, so we're talking differences of just 3 to 4 FPS at most. As we always say, you'd never really be able to tell the difference between the two when actually gaming, so factory overclocks aren't really worth considering as part of your buying decision, in our opinion. As for overclocking then, the first thing to say is with the performance BIOS, you can increase the power limit up to 400 watts. However, if you're using the silent BIOS, the power limit can't be adjusted above 100%, so it is locked at 340 watts. We did all of our overclocking then using the performance BIOS, and we were able to add 110 MHz to the GPU, though the memory didn't overclock as well as anything more than another 1200 MHz resulted in performance degradation. Still, the GPU frequency increased to an average of 2994 MHz during our 30 minute stress test, which is a real world increase of about 170 megahertz. As for what difference this overclock actually made, well, we saw an improvement of around 6% in the three titles we tested. So it's not massive overall, but I guess it's better than nothing. Power draw did also rise as a result of this overclock, but only by 10 watts. So that's barely 
a 3% increase and is really nothing to worry about. So as the fourth RTX 4080 that I have reviewed, I really have to say that the GameRock OC is my pick of the bunch so far. I really don't think it has any major weaknesses and across the board, it does everything pretty well. I really like the dual BIOS implementation for instance with the silent BIOS offering the lowest noise levels yet, while the performance BIOS also offers the highest clock speed of any 4080 we have tested so far. Palette's cooler design also proved to be highly efficient. It may not be the outright coolest running card when noise normalized, but it still came within one degree of the Gigabyte Gaming OC, so that is a pretty good result. I also have to say that I personally really do like the design of this card. Now, I know it's definitely going to split opinion, but in my view, it's just a real unique aspect, a genuine USP of the GameRock OC, something which not all AIB cards out there genuinely have. So while I do genuinely like what Palette has done here with this RTX 4080, it is still an RTX 4080, a product which really doesn't offer good value at all. So for me, it's just hard to get too enthused about this card. That is especially the case with the launch of RDNA 3, now just two weeks away. I've said it before and I will say it again. My advice to anyone looking to buy a high-end GPU is just to wait and see what happens as we head into 2023. As right now, RTX 4080 is just way too expensive for the performance on offer. That is going to do it for this review though guys. So if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up. And as always, let me know your thoughts down below. What are you hoping to see from RDNA 3? And do you think it will be competitive with the likes of the 4080? Please do subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell so you won't miss when we upload a video. We'd also love to chat with you guys over on our Discord server, which is linked in the description below. And while you're there, you can also find a link to our brand new merch store with some cool designs like these, which we would love you guys to pick up. Lastly, if you're feeling particularly generous, you could also consider backing us on Patreon. Again, that is linked in the description. That's it for me though, guys. I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.